Hello and welcome to the Wilson Creek Darkroom. I'm Colin and today I'm going to walk through a project that I did in March of 2020 and into April 2020. Right at the beginning of the quarantine, um, Eliza and I were in our apartment. I was going a little stir crazy. I was just starting to get into film photography and I didn't know what to do with myself. And so, uh, after watching some videos from Brennan Berry, which I recommend you look up on YouTube, uh, I decided to turn our bedroom into a camera. And so, this project is called Bedroom Camera Obscura. And uh, I'm not going to take a long time to explain with a camera obscura is, but this is an image that is used quite often to show what one is. Uh, it's simply a black room or black box uh, with a small hole to let light through. And you see that here with the letter C, that small hole. And that's called your aperture, just like a camera. And the smaller and more perfect that that hole is, the better the quality of light and clearer the image is in the room. Um, and so I'm going to take some time to go through this project as I did it at the time. And I, I, I hope it's interesting. Um, the value that I got out of doing it, besides just dealing with my boredom at the time, <laughs> was um, that by blowing up a camera to the size of a room, like I just said with that hole being the aperture, it really does a good job of helping, or it did for me, help me to understand the pieces of the camera a lot better than just watching a YouTube video about a camera or, um, you know, just learning the photographic process or something. Um, by having a, an entire room where I could change the size of the hole, the aperture, I could move the focal plane, I could change what I was projecting onto, all of those things come into play and it was very interesting to work on. So let me just show you real quick what my setup kind of looked like at first. Um, there was only a single window in the bedroom and I just kind of threw a whole bunch of stuff over it at the time uh, to black out the, the window. I just really literally took what was in my bedroom at the time and, and even the curtains that were on there and pinning them in a certain way just to let a little bit. You can see the, the hole kind of right in the middle. I'll zoom in on this later, but um, that was my first kind of swing at it, I believe. I don't know if I had enough pictures to know exactly what my first thing was. This is already, you know, a year and a half ago, but um, so I had a screen, um, kind of diffusing screen for, for making light kind of scattered. And I just thought, well, it, it's kind of like a projector screen. So maybe I could use that to take what was coming through the window and project it onto this screen, kind of like a rear projector, um, like you could imagine at a movie theater. Um, you know, you have a movie theater, a lot of times the projector is behind the people and it shoots onto the uh, screen in front of the people. And then you also have those that are, this, the projector is behind the screen and just shoots onto the screen and you can see through it. There's both, there's both kinds. Um, and so I just thought maybe I could do something like that. So you can see here, um, it's a very poor image quality because I was just kind of getting up and running here. But you can kind of see there's a faint, you know, image that's on the, and believe me, when you're, when you're kind of putting this together, that faint image is like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> just the fact that I was able to do anything. Um, but very quickly, I learned that the screen is really diffusing the light, which is an entire, which is an entire purpose. It's not a projecting screen. It is a diffusing screen. And so it was doing exactly what it was supposed to do. Um, and now you can see how that light is just being shot in every direction rather than collecting that light and making it sharp and bright. But anyway, I, I made some progress with it. Um, some of these early images is me not knowing how in a almost completely dark room, um, to get focus on that screen. But here's a video of me just trying to see how can I get even get focus with my phone to 
see what's on the screen. Because what I could see in real life at the time was better than um, what I was getting when I was taking a quick shot of it. So I backed up a little bit, took a photo, I think, with my phone on long exposure. This is probably back when I had an iPhone 10 or 11 or something 18 months ago. Um, now, it, this was kind of illuminating, <laughs> pun intended, uh, to, to me, because look at how much light I am letting leak through. Now, with your human eye, at the time, I didn't see it that much until I was in that dark room a long time before I realized how much light was being let into the room other than through that aperture. And it's very important if you're going to build one of these, um, whether it's room size, box size, whatever, that the only light that gets into the room is from that hole. And that will dramatically increase the quality of the image. But if you look, you can kind of see a blue sky there. You know, you can kind of see some of the things going on there. Now, without knowing what's on the other side, we were in a little town and directly across the street from us, from our third floor apartment, was just a house. So, um, you can start to see that that image starting to appear there. But anyway, I knew, based on some of these photos, you know, this is what I was trying to do with the digital camera, trying to capture some stuff here. Um, I knew that I would have to change everything about this. Um, but here's probably the best I got with that diffusing screen um, it's upside down because if you go back to that image that I showed you of the camera obscura that that f illustration this fascinates me so if it bores you just hit fast forward or something but it, it becomes obvious when you're looking at this but it's not something I think about all the time but light travels in a straight line so of course if you have a small hole that you're looking through and let's say you're looking at a person, the person's feet, the light moves directly from their feet to the top of your eye, and their head moves from the, their head to the bottom of your eye. Your brain flips it over, as we all know. But um, this just is a really cool way. Once again, by, breaking, by, by building this big, humongous camera, you're going, oh, that's, it's, it's obvious once you build it, but. Um, people that are watching this that are smarter than me are probably like, well, yeah, of course, Colin, but, um, yeah, this, uh, this was really neat to get to this point. So you can actually see a house now. Really weird. I I'll show you a video in a second. Really weird to start seeing it moving on the other side. So you're in a completely blacked out room and then you have a screen that's, you know, three and a half, four feet tall or something. And you can see things moving outside. It becomes like, like you're a spy. It's very weird. It's like having a webcam outside. Um, so here it is flipped. I just probably flipped it digitally in the camera or something. Where now I can zoom in on the the uh, the house and see what's going on, on the other side. Very, very cool to play with this. I, I almost want to do it again in some way. Maybe in my shed outside, but I think there's probably a lot of light that comes in there. Okay, so here's that setup again. And when, you, when I zoom in, you can see, if you look at the aperture that I created, ignore the fact that there's so much light coming in from everywhere else. Um, even the aperture that I made, I just used a pair of scissors and, you know, jammed a hole in it. So even that was like very, you know, uh, oddly shaped and soft edges and all of that. All of those things play into how clear the image is. So one thing I did was add a lens. Um, you don't have to do this, uh, but I just thought maybe by collecting the light, a lens a lot of times will kind of compress the light. I don't know all the right terms to use to describe this, but a, a, a lens will usually compress the light into uh, instead of it's instead of it scattering as much. So I put that on the other side of the aperture, the outside of the house. You could, you could think of it that way. Um, and then that improved it greatly. Um, I also made a much better hole. I didn't take a picture of that. I met, uh, the aperture I made, um, I believed I used a hole punch into cardboard. So the hole punch was as, you know, fairly perfectly circle. 
Um, and that made a big, big, big impact. So you can see I'm holding in my hand um, a, it looks like a piece of paper, um, but it's a scanning bed, the, the kind of piece that goes into an Epson scanner that you can take out. I don't know what to call it, but it's effectively a big white piece of paper almost. And now you're starting to see the difference between that screen that shoots all the light everywhere and diffuses it and something that more focuses it. Now I'm getting, now I purposely took these photos in monochrome, but uh, that's why they're black and white. But you can start to see, wow, this is really becoming a, a clear image. Now, the thing that can change how clear that image is, and I'll have a small video of this in a second. If I were to take that scanning bed thing and move it really close to the aperture, like all the way up to the, the camera like I'm doing right now, um, it would be blurry. And if I moved it too far away, it would be blurry. Uh, now that's called your focal plane. You're moving your focal plane. And the distance between the aperture and where that board is, uh, somewhere in there is right where your focus plane is. And that is based on the size of the aperture. So if I made a really, really small aperture, I um, actually don't know which way this would go. Let me think about this for a second. I believe if I made it very small, I could get closer. And if I make it very large, I have to make it further away. So that's why you have like these old cameras that have those long bellows. Is because at some point when you're really trying to open that aperture as high as far as you possibly can, you have to put the bellows forward for first. If I'm wrong on that, whoever knows more than me about this stuff, put it in there. But, that, but there is a relationship between the size of the aperture and where that focal plane is. And that's where... Um, now, you might wonder, like, a camera doesn't move that around. Well, the lenses make up for that. There's a lot of different pieces of glass in there that make up for that in there. So, I mounted that uh, scanning bed thingy. That's what we'll call it from now on. I mounted that to a tripod just so I could have the focal plane in the right spot. Didn't have to hold it with my hand. Um, because the first few prints that I made, because I ended up making some paper negatives, which I'll show you soon, um, the first few prints that I made um, were were handheld, and that is not good to do that. <laughs> I'll show you why. Um, so here's what the scanner, or the, excuse me, the, the tripod looked like. I think I just used double-sided tape to put that there. Um, and here's a terrible image of what resulted in color. Uh, you can see it's a little bit blurry. Now that has to do with how flat against because that matters too. In a, in a large format camera, you're able to tilt the standard. You can either tilt the um, lens any way you want, or you can tilt the film any way you want. And so all of those things play into what parts of the image are in focus. So you really want to have a square parallel aperture to the window, so or the film to the window. So I learned all those things. It's very interesting to, to look at all this. Here's a video. I'm not sure if you guys can hear this. I don't, yeah, you probably couldn't have heard that, but I was, there's motorcycles going down the road and it's really weird. Here's a really good image. So again, it's upside down. There's me in the background of it. I put my phone and took a picture, took a selfie. Um, see the car going down the road? It's really weird. It's fun. So I played with that for a while, just trying to get that dialed in. And uh, I got pretty good at dialing it in. And here is uh, a digital image. Man, how did I do this? I probably did this with my phone. So I think I took a selfie of the scanning bed. That's my heater because we are in the basement in a dark room. So you're going to have to deal with it if you can hear my heater. Uh, so this is a digital photograph taken with my phone of the scanning bed and then flipped and made black and white. It's pretty neat. You can even zoom in and see 
how good the fidelity is on it. You can see the each individual uh, roof tile there or shingle and how many different repairs have happened on that house um, for various reasons. In fact, I think while we lived there, they repaired the house a couple times, just little patches. Uh, very, very cool. Very fun to play with. There it is again, flipped upside down. This is a video. So this is a video that's upside down that I flipped. I'm not sure if you can hear what I said, but I said there's a dog in the window. And uh, one of my goals was to get a photo with my window of the dog in the window. I believe I was successful. See the cars moving? See? It's very neat. So, it, you know, I could have stopped here. This was pretty cool to have a digital image taken with a bedroom. <laughs> Um, and it was a lot of fun, but I wanted to make a paper negative, um, which if you don't know what that is, uh, instead of a film negative being a piece of plastic that you're used to film looking like, like it's plastic, you just do it with paper. Um, so you take photosensitive paper and you use that as your film essentially. And so I set up a dark room in the bedroom, um, because I didn't want to leave the room with uh, with the paper, the photosensitive paper, the light sensitive paper, I had to keep the bedroom completely black. And interestingly enough, I think I ended up going into the bathroom by by taking the piece of paper after I exposed it and putting it into a box and then going in the bathroom and then developing it. But this first time, but you can see, it ends up being a lot of hassle because I had I had to navigate this in darkness. I had a headlamp with a red light on it. It was quite a thing. So here's the first latent image I got on a piece of paper. So I developed it. You can tell it's very underexposed, probably underdeveloped as well. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, before that, I don't know if I've ever, I think I ordered the paper. Remember, this is a whole week worth of me doing this. So I think I ordered the paper and got it in. So I never even had paper before. I didn't know what ISO rating to, to uh, rate this paper, but you can see something. I mean, you can imagine the very first people that ever did photography using a camera obscura, trying to capture that image on something using some chemicals. And if they got this, they'd be happy. I was happy. So here's the first two that I did. Um, I believe the main reason I found out that this was so low contrast was because I had my iPhone on. I'm really trying to remember what, exactly what I did, but I think I had my iPhone on in the room and I don't even know why I did. And these first two were just not good, but they made me happy. But then here is the result of a second attempt. Um, something you'll notice, but you can't really see very good. But if you look at the bottom of the image, right in the middle, there's like a perfect half moon white thing right in the middle, all the way to the bottom. That's my thumb. I think I did this handheld also. I think I was holding the piece of paper. It, I, don't, I think I taped it the second one. I don't remember, but I just remember at this point, Eliza wanted the bedroom back and I wanted to be done with this. And so I think I may have forced my way into the, getting this accomplished. So here's two negatives that I did. Let me go to uh, here and show you. I still have it. So it's a 5 by 7 piece of paper. That's a pretty big negative. Very good quality. Um, if I had done it well and I had a really good lens, this would be a massive image. As far as quality goes, it would be Hundreds of megabytes, I believe. Um, but you can see, you know, you can see right in to the person's window, pretty much. Uh, very, very cool. I still have it. I'll have it forever, hopefully. Um, here is the four attempts. 
and then when you invert the colors this is what you get there's a lot going on in this i don't know why there's so much dirt on the image um the the blurriness was my fault um you can see the puppy though right in the um the window let me go back right in the window there's he wasn't looking out but he was sitting in the window um the blurriness I believe came from the fact that I didn't remove the screen I don't even know how in the world I, I think once I cardboarded up the entire window I just forgot that the screen was even there because I, again I was just playing around I wasn't really trying to get a good image until I got to a point where I was like hey maybe I should really try to get a good image here and when that kind of hit I had already forgotten what was on the other side I couldn't see it it was just a tiny little hole in the window so this is shooting through a screen and if the screen wasn't there it'd probably be super crisp there was the four attempts so when you're scanning when you're scanning in the um the the paper negative of course i can play with it a lot so they look better than they probably really should and you're probably thinking man these are terrible this is taken with a window i took a picture with a window i think that's pretty neat so, this was a fun project. Um, I don't know if I'll ever do it again. I want to. <coughs> I'm keeping that sneeze in. I don't know why I just sneezed. Um, but, some things I really took away from this is that you can make your own cameras. Um, there are many people out there that make really great cameras. Brendan Berry, Ethan Moses, um, uh, there's a lot of 3D printed cameras now. Um, people build their own large format. If you go to the Large Format Photography Podcasts Facebook group, that was a lot of words, um, you can see a lot of people that build some really, really neat, highly accurate, to the millimeter cameras. Very good build qualities, made out of brass and wood and everything. Very, very neat. But I'm just telling you right now that with whatever you have in your house right now, you can make your own camera. And that is really an interesting thing to play around with. Hope you enjoyed this video. I might be back with another one at some point. I kind of like doing these. And uh, thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe and all that junk. Thank you.